A warm welcome again. We begin with Russia's invasion of Ukraine, where the Russian government has reported a Ukrainian drone attack on an airbase for bombers in southern Russia, leaving three people dead. The defense ministry says air defense shot down the drone near the Engels uh, base, but falling debris fatally wounded three technical staff. The base lies about 500 kilometers northeast of Ukraine's border. The Ukrainian military has not officially admitted carrying out the latest attack, but Air Force spokesman Yuri Innat said the explosions were the result of what Russia was doing on Ukrainian soil. The latest incident will come as an embarrassment to Russian authorities coming so soon after the two uh, 5th of December attacks hundreds of kilometers from the front line, both at the base and in the Razan region. Meanwhile, the Ukrainian armed forces, together with the National Guard of Ukraine, conducted military drills in undisclosed locations, which military said was near the border with Belarus. Video released on Saturday by press service of Ukraine's armed forces showed Ukrainian servicemen training to prevent attack from tactical airborne troops on the critical state facilities. Belarus has in recent weeks announced a flurry of military activity, including readiness checks and a fresh deployment of Russian troops to the country. The maneuvers prompted suggestions from Ukrainian officials that Russia may be planning a fresh attack on Ukraine via Belarusian territory, as it did unsuccessfully in the early days of its war in Ukraine. Earlier today, the Russian President Vladimir Putin hosted a summit of the post-Soviet Commonwealth of Independent States in St. Petersburg. Billed as informal, the gathering is an end-of-year meeting often hosted by Russia. In his opening remarks, President Putin expressed his gratitude to attendees for accepting his invitation and for coming to St. Petersburg for what he said was a traditional, informal, pre-New Year meeting of the CIS heads of state's participants. The CIS was formed following the dissolution of the Soviet Union in 1991 and grouped all 15 former Soviet republics, except the three Baltic states, Latvia, Lithuania and Estonia, which never joined. Georgia left the grouping in 2009 over its 2008 war with Russia and Ukraine, pulled out in 2014 following Russia's annexation of Crimea. On Sunday, the Russian president said his country's offensive in Ukraine is being carried out to unite the Russian people. In an interview aired in Russia today, he said Russia's geopolitical opponents were aiming to tear apart Russia, the historical Russia. It comes as Russia today carried out more attacks on Ukraine. The multiple explosions and constant shelling were heard in Ukraine's Bakhmut, an eastern city that has become the target of Russian attempts to advance in recent weeks in fighting that has killed thousands of soldiers. Wrecked apartment blocks, fire and thick grey smoke rising over residential areas were seen in the city, all signs of the nearly five-month battle for Bakhmut. In his evening address on Sunday, President Zelensky said Moscow is aiming to make the rest of 2022 dark and difficult for Ukraine, adding that I know that darkness will not prevent us from bringing the invaders to their new defeats, but we must be ready for any scenario. His statement comes on the same day the Russian President Vladimir Putin said he was ready to negotiate with all parties involved in the war in Ukraine, although he said Kiev and its western backers have refused to engage in talks. On Saturday, the Kherson Regional State Administration released a video on social media showing burnt cars, bodies, blood on the ground and damaged buildings in the recaptured city. Seven people had died in the attack and 58 others wounded. The attack was said to have come from a grand multiple rocket launcher. Residents in the city of Kramatorsk have nothing but anger and hatred against the Russians as they walk through what used to be a residential building now damaged by the Russian strike. And for those in Bakhmut, they are merely surviving, grateful they live another day, but fearful any day could be their last.
Let's talk some more about the situation in Ukraine. Joining us now is Anna Chernikova. Anna, it's good to see you. Talk to us about um, today in Ukraine. I mean, in other parts of the world, it's celebrations, but give us a sense of, you know, the atmosphere there today. Good evening. Uh, well, it's definitely a very, um, very special Christmas for Ukraine and uh, very, you know, um, different uh, Christmas uh, from previous years. Uh, a lot of Ukrainians uh, were not celebrating it, not at home. Some uh, Ukrainians were celebrating uh, at the front line. Uh, but I should say that this was the first year that Ukrainian church uh, has officially, uh, well, officially uh, had a service, church service on the 25th of December. So millions of Ukrainians actually celebrated uh, Christmas this past weekend uh, as previously uh, Ukrainians were celebrating at the beginning uh, of uh, January. And uh, this was, um, yeah, so this was for the first time and uh, a lot of people actually uh, you know, encourage church to uh, to uh, make this transition of the calendar. A lot of people don't want to celebrate and to have any cultural and traditional uh, similarities with Russia, of course. But you know, this change of church calendar uh, is a discussion. Uh, within the Ukrainian society for years now. Uh, so uh, this year it was kind of a turning point due to this full-scale invasion. And actually, uh, this, as I already said, this Christmas was very special. So uh, Ukrainians uh, joined uh, the rest of Europe, the rest of the world, uh, with celebrating on the 25th of uh, December. Uh, I cannot say that you can really feel um, much, you know, Christmas mood. Uh, because, uh, of course, um, you know, the war uh, is definitely uh, prevailing and the war is definitely taking over all the emotions uh, and all the, you know, mood senses. But, uh, of course, people are trying to create at least, uh, you know, some Christmas mood and happy mood in their homes, uh, in the restaurants, in the cafeterias, in the stores. You can see decorations. Uh, so definitely Ukrainians, you know, uh, wanted to keep this tradition uh, and also Ukrainian soldiers, a lot of them had also this, uh, you know, Christmas celebration, even though they were at, the, at point zero at the front line. But we, we've seen photos and videos from soldiers celebrating. So uh, definitely traditions were uh, present this year. Uh, however, of course, it was very special and different Christmas. And Anna, many also wonder to some of those areas that were so-called, well, Russia says, you know, it was annexed, uh, you know, to, to it. Uh, many wonder how celebrations also um, went on there. But also another question is, have there been any more attacks since yesterday? Well, unfortunately, it was an attack, uh, a, a very bad attack over the weekend uh, on the city of Kherson and the city center. So basically, Christmas uh, started tragically for the city of Kherson. Uh, for the moment, we know about, uh, well, confirmed number is 68 wounded and 10 dead. Um, uh, all those are the, the civilians. Uh, Russian forces uh, used artillery system Grad to uh, to shell uh, the, the central part of, of the city, uh, damaging uh, residential areas and damaging hospitals uh, in the city of Kherson. Uh, a lot of um, so U Ukrainian authorities encourage people to uh, who have this opportunity and. Uh, uh, who have uh, like who are ready, let's say, to evacuate from Kherson for a certain time before it becomes more safe, because Russian forces are just on the other side of the river and um, Kherson is reachable with artillery systems. So, uh, and especially those people who are living next to the river of Dnipro, they are encouraged actually to evacuate. Uh, however, um, and 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 the government created this possibility, this evacuation procedure for for those who want. But um, in general, uh, I well, I think this was the most tragic part of of this past weekend. Um, Ukraine experienced massive air raid siren twice yesterday as well. However, no attacks were happening massively. Uh, we only know about attacks in the Donetsk region, in Kherson region. These attacks are happening 
constantly, uh, almost nonstop. And of course, we should not forget about Bakhmut. Bakhmut is one of the hottest spots for the moment uh, at the front line and very, very heavy battles are happening there. Um, and Ukrainian forces uh, managed to keep their positions, not letting Russian forces uh, to proceed and to advance. This was confirmed by the general staff of Ukraine. Uh, so uh, I guess this is the main, uh, this is basically, this, this, this are, these are two main uh, directions we should look at uh, at this point of time, uh, Kherson, Kherson region and, um, and Bakhmut. Ukraine is yet to comment on the drone strike at the Russian air base. Has there been any change to the status quo? Well, uh, we don't have any official confirmations or, confici or official announcements, um, statements from Ukrainian authorities uh, regarding these attacks. We've heard from, uh, from one of the representatives from the, of the Ukrainian um, 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 armed forces, Mr. Ignat, uh, that um, this is basically, well, Russia is getting the answer for what uh, Russia is doing in Ukraine, but it was not a direct, uh, you know, confirmation that Ukraine, um, well, had something to do with this attack. But of course, we all understand that this was not accidentally uh, an accident. And uh, we all understand and we all can see and can follow this, all these reports about more and more attacks that are happening deep in, into Russia. And uh, all of them are uh, basically targeting military infrastructure, military air bases and, uh, and storages. And we hear a lot about uh, new, uh, new fires, new explosions. So definitely, well, definitely, I guess uh, this is, this is um, a consequence of Russia's actions in Ukraine. But again, we don't have official confirmations. Now, we heard in his evening address on Sunday, President Zelensky said the country must be ready for any scenario. Um, and it was also the same day that uh, Russian President Vladimir Putin said he was ready to negotiate with all parties involved. But then he said that uh, Kyiv and the Western backers are not interested in any kind of talks. Would you say that is the case for Kyiv? Well, um, from what we know, for, for, for now, Russia do not ready to negotiate on, you know, on the basis of um, of equal negotiations. Uh, so Russia wants to negotiate their uh, points and only their points. They have certain views uh, and certain. Uh, well, suggestions of how they see these negotiations, but uh, definitely this is not something that uh, would be uh, would be relevant for Ukraine, as the Ukrainian president already mentioned and also uh, announced uh, during his visit to Washington to, and during his uh, press conference with President Biden that Ukraine has. Uh, uh, so basically, there is this Kyiv peace plan, and uh, this is what Ukraine is ready to negotiate with uh, both with its European partners and with Russia when Russia is ready. So according to Ukrainian officials, as well as U.S. officials and uh, some of the also European uh, officials, uh, Russia yet is not ready to negotiate terms uh, not uh, basically not lead uh, that are not leaded by them. So Russia is not only ready to negotiate their own terms. And um, this is what President Zelensky already mentioned a couple of times, not what Ukraine is interested in. And this is not what's going to lead to uh, long term peace because Ukraine is interested in only in uh, long term peace. And uh, for the moment, Ukrainian officials see this uh, and Ukrainian society actually see this long-term peace only v with victory. And this is basically, uh, basically, I guess, what, what, uh, what makes these negotiations impossible because Russia definitely is not ready to accept that. Uh, and uh, Ukraine sees a long-term peace with getting all its territory back, including Donbass and Crimea. So this is definitely something that to be, uh, well, if to be negotiated one day, uh, not uh, probably not uh, what could be negotiated at this point of time. So um, I don't think that, uh, I mean, of course, Russian side would uh, would put it the way they uh, they want it to be, you know, seen. But uh, according to, again, to what we hear from U.S. partners, from European partners, uh, uh, I mean, the main negotiation is right now is happening at the battlefield. 
And Anna, it's only a few days to the end of 2022. What expectations do Ukrainians have for the new year? Well, definitely Ukrainians want peace and Ukrainians uh, see this peace only through the victory. So Ukrainians want victory. And uh, definitely um, this is something that Ukrainian society is ready for. They're ready to uh, fight until this very victory is happening. And uh, Ukrainian society is ready to, uh, well, to, to go through difficulties like energy difficulties, electricity difficulties, battlefield, battlefield difficulties. But uh, definitely this is the only way as what Ukrainian officials and Ukrainian society see as a long term peace. Um, and as we already discussed, so I guess this 2023, the, the, the main and only wish that you well, the main wish, let's put it this way, uh, the main wish that Ukrainians would have is uh, peace and uh, the victory, because um, this this is something that could not be without each other. Anna Chenikova, VOA's correspondent, joining us from Kiev. Thanks a lot and try to enjoy your holiday. Thank you.